Ian McCall, President of the Sheep Meat Council of Australia. Welcome to Digital Farm TV. Thank you, Mike. Tell us about wild dogs. Wild dogs, look, it's, it's great as an industry and, and Minister Joyce launched last week the new national wild dog campaign. Wild dogs have been a huge issue for us in many production areas um, in different parts of different states, but a number of producers have had to go out of producing either, well, any sort of livestock, be it cattle or be it sheep. You know, most people seem to think it's a major issue for sheep production, can be just as big an issue for, for cattle production, and it's great that we're now having a whole of national, state, local government and all the associated bodies that are involved will actually now be working together to formulate a plan to hopefully have a major impact on wild dogs which, which are causing havoc within the industry and, and major welfare concerns for us as well as anything else. Talking about impacts then, can you describe in some way the impact wild dogs are having on, on uh, lamb and sheep and wool producers and other, other livestock obviously right around Australia? Look, it's a, it's a major issue for us. It, it is area specific, um, you know, it's not, there, there are some areas that, and I guess this has been one of the issues or the, one of the problems for the industry is that there are certain areas that are really badly affected uh, and there are other areas not so much and so that's been part of our whole education campaign uh, because, the, you know, the production losses, you can get 100% production losses, as I say, and, and individual farmers going completely out of industries. Uh, because they just can't, they can't address, they can't overcome their problems that they've got. Uh, and the problem is escalating. Are you sure that the, the uh, you know, may, having a united approach is terrific, but what you really need is a strategy and far more aggressive, um, if I can use that word, far more aggressive programs uh, by government and the private sector to control the dog? Look, absolutely, and that's part of this whole new campaign. And, and I think also there's been a recognition that it's going to happen at a regional basis and I think if we look at campaigns over time that have happened within the within the farming industry it's very much the fact that when you regionalise those and you put a person in charge at that region who actually has ownership of it and knows what's going on with that region and I think that's what's great about the new plan it actually takes into account a regional approach but then ties it into a state and to a national approach and that's to my knowledge that's the first time that's ever happened. Big challenge, we wish the uh, whole industry great luck in getting this thing under control. Absolutely. Can we talk, turn now to talk about uh, sheep meat demand, both domestically and, and uh, overseas? Um, what are the challenges and what are the opportunities going into the future? Look, the sheep meat industry I think is a great place to be at the moment. If we look what's happening on a, on a world basis, New Zealand is certainly reducing their demand, their ability to supply. You know, they've come back from under 30 million sheep. Uh, the dairy industry in the South Island has taken a considerable amount of sheep production out of that particular area. The demand that we're seeing for our product around the world now is increasing, has been increasing on a, on a steady basis. You know, China's been a major increase into China into, into the last two years. We look at having look, good markets all around the world. We don't want one particular market that we're actually beholden to or has a, a huge level of market power because, as in any organisation, you know, the, the strength is in the amount of different markets that we actually have. 54% of our products now are going overseas. Biggest, biggest market is still our domestic market, which is 46%, which is a very strong market for us. But I think realistically, you know, we are going to see most of the improvements come from overseas. Also, you look at what's going on with live export. We've just reopened the markets into Bahrain, which will turn potentially into a very important market for us again. About two million sheep going out live export at the moment this year with forecasts of three plus over the next few years. So, so our ability to supply uh, is going to be a real challenge for the industry on a year round basis. So the, uh, I, I guess the council and the industry are working on strategic plans to address those challenges? Look, we are. We've just finished the strategic sheep industry plan which went from 2010 to 2015 and we're now working on the new one from 2015 to 2020 which, which will outline a lot of those issues and a lot of those concerns so we can continue providing a premium product which we've been marking for the last number of years on, on a worldwide basis. We're, we're producing, you know, we're supplying over 100 countries with product at the moment which, uh, which has been an extraordinary turnaround from where we were as an industry many years ago. MLA, Research and Development and Marketing, uh, it cops its fair share of criticism as all such bodies do. Is there a real need, it's got a new CEO, is there a real need for cultural change there at MLA and to adjust to the re new realities going forward? 
look, I think any industry that doesn't change at the moment uh, is going to fall behind, you know, and, and the livestock industry is no different to any other industry. MLA, I think, um, is, is changing some of the ways that they do business. I mean, we work really collaborative with MLA and have done on a very much a long-term basis. We're looking at changes that we need within the industry. MLA, I think, is also uh, aware that you know, there needs to be a level of change and, and clearly with the new CEO they've now got in there uh, and has come in and said that you know, I'm looking at how we do business and, uh, and it'd be really good to see what sort of changes are implemented over the next period of time. We have a really good working relationship with them done a huge amount on R&D, there's no doubt that R&D and genetics has been one, of, and, and meat eating quality and the different cuts that we now have in the lamb industry have, have been a huge level of success, which has been a joint venture with MLA.